I've mapped the FI journey onto the hero's journey simply as a heuristic device, you know, just as a way to sort of see the pattern. This community thinks getting FI is the whole journey, and it's really just the first quadrant of setting forth, you know, seeing there is another way, I'm going to find it. You set forth and you, you know, you find allies, the other, Mr. Must, <laughs> Mr. Money Mustache, whatever. You find your allies and you think you have de identified the goal, you know what the grail is, it's FI. And then you, that's the first passage into the unknown, is you pass through that portal and you find yourself in another landscape. And the landscape, you thought you wanted to be free, but it's completely uncontained. And uh, so you go through this struggle to orient yourself to this new landscape. The things that you thought were beneficial or not beneficial, they're challenges. There's shame associated with, I thought I was going to you know, do the thing, you know, do the great task, and here I am, and I'm sort of a nobody out here. So the second quadrant in the hero's journey, that part of it, for the FI journey, I describe as, first, there is, I sleep. <laughs> I watch all the series on Netflix that I haven't watched. Maybe I read a book. I, I take up the hobbies I always said I wanted to do. You know, I do my, my bicycle or I learn guitar or something like that. And then what I've noticed is a lot of people, when they start to find their footing around purpose, it becomes to teach others about this path because it's the one thing you found in life that's distinctive and that's made a difference and that other people are really interested in. And it's actually what Joe and I did. You know, we started to, after we traveled, built our motorhome, traveled, you know, done stuff, then we started to teach the process that Joe had actually gone through. And, um, and that became, that all the way up to including became your money, your life. And then after you get there and you think, aha, I have my cred, you know, I'm an FI person and I'm teaching other people and I'm hosting conversations and I'm hosting camps, blah, blah, blah. Then you start to see that there is a there is actually a greater world outside the context even of getting and having money or, you know, whatever those activities are. You start to see that there's a larger world. You go and you live on the beach in Thailand for six months, but you realize oh, the reason I can do this is because of the, of the global economy, <laughs> is that my dollars earned in the United States can actually privilege me. You start to see privilege, you start to see poverty, you start to see people who are actually more capable of happiness than you are living on nothing, you know, and dying of, you know, a preventable disease. You start to, whatever these things are, you start to realize that there's, you know, maybe you tune into politics, you realize, I want to be FI, but I can't because of the health insurance. And then you start to see, oh, I, can't, I see. This is not an individual problem. This is something that's besetting all of us. You know, you start, you widen your frame beyond your personal life and your personal success at creating your own personal fiefdom. And, you know, being able to entertain yourself and keep yourself busy and make a difference to people um, to a certain degree. I think that's the third quadrant is, is that, I, that deeper identity crisis of, it's really not about me actually anymore. It's not about me. It's about how can I help. So that's the third quadrant is that you start to engage. In. And none of this is a necessity. You know, like the hero's journey, none of it is a necessity. You can just stay in the village and not, you know, sally forth at all. You know, none of it is a necessity. It's just what's waiting for you. How can I help quadrant? Um, and then there is the realization at some point that there's something deeper in this whole thing that I've learned. And there's the effort to, not to just make yourself accountable by being a blog or make some extra money. But there's, and that's really your wisdom years. That's your time in life where you go like, distill, what's this all really been about? As I look back on this whole storyline, it's the realization that as I am passing through this world, this world is also passing through me. I am, there is no way I cannot make a difference because my very life is part of the whole. And my actions in it are not acting upon segments of the whole, it's just who I am is an expression of 
what life is about. I don't know how to describe that. It is an elder process. And I, that's where I feel I am now, where it's really not about, you know, some heroic something that I'm doing. It's just about the simple fact of I've had this privilege to have this little slice of eternity, to be conscious in a little slice of eternity. And it doesn't matter whether I wake up in the morning and am kind to one person, take a walk, or make a speech to a thousand people. All of that is on the same par because it is all simply love and action, I guess you'd call it. Observing the people in this community and the thought that I have chosen a path that um, is gonna take me to happiness. You know, this I'm, I'm gonna be happy when I'm FI, you know, and I have found myself a path out of the misery of, day, of you know, sort of repetitive, I'm gonna find meaning, purpose, I'm gonna find everything in this FI path. Um, and um, that it doesn't actually, it, all it does is give you a fuller opportunity to encounter these deeper issues around identity, purpose, um, belonging, those are the big questions. I think, of course, you, I, I mean, anybody in any circumstance, we're all on a path. The FI path just has this distinction of people being passionately interested in amassing sufficient wealth to be able to live on passive income. It doesn't define a whole life path. Of course, I mean, this is life. This is life. But I think it's a question of, of waking up. And I think, I think the FI path is a, is, um, is a certain kind of awakening that the pattern that's been presented to me as the way to live your life does not sufficiently cover the territory of my life. And I see a way out. I see a way that I can get out of the humdrum, the unconscious repetition of societal patterns, of being a victim of this whole thing. I can, there's a, there's a sense of agency it's, and, and that's what makes it, that's what puts it on the hero's journey, uh, you know, s circle, is agency. I can take agency in my life. And one path of agency is to get out of the financial game. Another path of agency is, oh, I'm going to build a career. I'm going to go to graduate school. And, you know, uh, I think that that is, you know, you wake up earlier in life to that you have a choice. You, can, you are the director of your movie, and there are tools that you can use, and FI is one tool. Um, but all of the paths will lead eventually to these questions of who am I, who are my people, what am I here for, where do I belong, how much is enough. I think people can wake up in any circumstance, there's no question about it. So it's a difference between whether you've woken up. I think waking up is really just being able to have, um, to step outside of your daily life and have a witness. You have, you realize, it's not just you're living, you realize, oh, I am alive. It, it, that is actually, you know, that's an important realization. I'm alive, I'm making choices. Everything I've done in the past has led me to this moment. And so the choices I'm making now are leading to me to the next moments. That is a kind of a waking up. And a lot of people, you don't have to do that if you stay with the traditional life ways that your culture has presented you. But in our society, the traditional life ways for many reasons are um, unraveling. And so I think people on this FI path can feel the unraveling, you know, like, uh-oh, <laughs> you know, this, the, the, the path ahead, there is no path ahead. There's only a story from the past, but there is no path ahead because jobs are disappearing, prof whole professions are disappearing, you know, climate change, you know, like your communities, the seas are rising. We're starting to realize the insecurity of it all. So I think people on this FI path are trying to grab a tiller, you know, and one tiller, important one in our society is money. I think in our society, we have conflated four things that are different, but we put them all in the same bucket. Um, work, job, income, and identity. 
And this is why a lot of people go through an identity crisis when they get FI, develop passive income, and leave their job. <laughs> it's like suddenly <laughs> some of those essentials are not there. For me, you're because, because life is coursing through us in every moment, the task of self-expression is with us in every moment. What will I do with this life energy now? Not some big philosophical, what am I going to do with my one wild and precious life? Just like energy is coming through, you know? To, you know, I get up, I brush my teeth, you know, I take a shower. I, like, you know, the work of existence is to metabolize the energy that's coursing through you and make it into something that you yourself deem as worthy. And most often it's making a contribution in the lives of other people, making things better for other people. Some people, I guess, are sociopaths and they, all they want to do is just make it better for themselves. But I think most of us are social creatures and they, we have some instinctual understanding that we're part of a tribe and the, you know, with the tribe flourishes, I flourish. If the tribe fails, I fail. We are, we are designed to work for the benefit of all. That is my, I am not a follower of Ayn Rand. <laughs> so, so what am I going to do with this coursing energy? If so, of course, we love to work. We don't want to be without it. We don't want to be without a project, without a, a fascination, without a routine that, that makes sense to us, without a, without a, somebody to love or some buddies to love, without a community, without a club, without a tribe, without a clan, without a, you know, we, we want this. We want to contribute. You watch kids, they want to do that. You know, if they can, if they watch the people, you know, tanning hides, they want to tan hides. That's all they want to do. They want to contribute. So work is natural to us and you don't want to take somebody's work away. You take away somebody's work. And that is like putting somebody in solitary confinement in prison. That is not a happy place. Jobs are, are doing something that is somebody else's agenda, doing a bit of work, that's somebody else's agenda usually, that is time limited. If your job is not associated with your true work, which comes out of yourself and your own creativity and your own philosophical base, your own sense of caring and love, your heart, not your mind, your heart, that thing inside you that responds to the world outside. It's sort of the heart that beats with the heart of the world and notices, like a mother, what's needed. You know, if, you're, if your job is the same as that work, well, glory be, but there's, it doesn't happen that often. <laughs> and if somebody else has agency over when that job disappears, and so if you've invested all of your love in something that can disappear, somebody else can take it away from you, you need to like work, work at a deeper level so that ideally anything that you do comes from yourself, comes from your own sense of what you care about, who you, your, who you are, what you think is important in life, yeah, your contribution. And that you can, you can invest that in your job, you can invest that in your hobby, you can invest that in your family, you can invest that in your studies, you can invest that in your travel, you can invest it many places, but your work, who you are, is a non-stop self-expression. <laughs>